Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bronco Garage. I'm Monster Mike, and this is John Melton from National. <laughs> National. National. <laughs> I've gone national. National. <laughs> no more Nashville. <laughs> we're gonna take this uh, drum brakes off this 73 Bronco, and we are going to put on the budget disc brake kit from James Duff. The cool thing about this kit is it really is budget friendly. Like it's such a cheap option and it's a way better option than going with the Chevy or the GM disc brake swap because obviously this kit, it keeps the Ford components, but it also keeps the price down. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to back off the star wheel adjuster that actually puts the shoes up against the drums. Normally you would move the star wheel up in order to adjust the shoes towards the drum. So now I'm going to move the star wheel down. Remember that this drum is actually locating off of the neural or the shoulder on your lug studs. That's also locating off of your hub. So it's actually bound up against these five points and the center as well. So if you've got some drums and shoes seized together, probably most likely with rust, then uh, there's gonna have to take some more persuasive measurements in order to get that off. What I would suggest is actually cutting the drum off completely. You're gonna cut it across this face and then spin this 180 degrees and make another mark and cut that off. And then you're gonna take a chisel and hammer and you're just gonna try to break it apart in two pieces. Just keep in mind that there are some things here that you really don't want to damage. Drums, they're replaceable. But the hub, you definitely don't want to damage that. You don't want to hit it hard with a hammer or anything and warp or egg shape this hub. A lot of you guys are going to find that this mating surface right here is where you're going to be mostly rusted and seized against the hub. So at this point we've gotten the drum off. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna remove this brake line. And there's these little plugs that can go right into your flexible brake line hose. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the locking hub mechanism right here at the front of the hub. Take the hub off, then remove the drum backing plate by the six screws that hold it in. Now when you're pulling the locking hub mechanism out, you really need something like this where you can get in and get this lock ring out. So this ring, here it is right here. So you pull this ring out and it releases this whole locking mechanism. So I took the hub off and I'm just going to show you these pieces without the hub on there. So this is the spindle nut and the spindle nut washer in the middle there. And this is actually holding your hub on. So you got one that you unscrew and this first one comes off. And then you've got this washer that you have to get out of the inside of the hub. And then you have one more spindle nut as well. All right, so I've just got this Dana 44 tore down to where it's time to start putting on the disc brake kit parts. Now, before we do that, we want to do cover a few things on this hub. Now, this hub is actually gonna need to be sent off to a machine shop or back to James Duff, and it's gonna have to get a part of it turned down in order for the rotors to fit properly. Now, you can do that yourself or you can send them back to James Duff. They'll actually take care of that for you and uh, provide you a return label. Now, just remember, there's also some wheel bearings inside of here that you're gonna wanna inspect. Now you can check out all the great tech and info on how to replace these and how to inspect them in our wheel bearing install video. Uh, you can check that out in the link down below. So this is what Michael was just talking about. So this hub doesn't sit flush on the rotor right now. And that's because the end of it, it's actually a beveled edge right here. Now we're gonna have to remove these studs as well. You just wanna make sure if you are hammering on these that you are careful not to warp this edge right here. Like if you just 
set it down on the ground and start hammering right here, you're gonna bend this or warp this and it's not gonna sit flush. So you wanna be really careful. I'd recommend using a press to press them out or brace this uh, underneath and don't just set this on the ground and hammer it out. Now that you've got your hub back from either a machine shop or James Duff, you want to make sure that there's no machining debris inside where the races are. Now, if you went ahead and took your races out, this will be the time to clean everything out and then reinstall your races. If you're not sure how to do that, you can go ahead and watch our wheel bearing install video. And uh, then once you've got this back and you've got it cleaned, you're then going to install your rotor onto the hub. Now I'm going to use a piece of wood because when I'm pounding these studs through, I don't want the face of the hub to be on a hard surface and then damage. It's a little loose still. And the way that you tighten this all the way up, I just use like three washers and an impact gun. And then once I've got all five of those tight, then it'll stop making that noise because the hub will be seated 100% to your rotor. Now, the important part about this step is that there is a little bit of material that needs to be removed from the knuckle in order for the caliper to slide uh, and do its job properly. Now, as you can see, I've got one that's already been clearanced and ground like you should, and just giving you a good visual on what had to be done here in order for this to work. And as you can see, there's a lot of material right here still left over even after it was ground off. And you can see it's about an eighth inch roughly. And you're just gonna have to grind away until you finally have the, the caliper clearing and moving freely. This little bit of uh, leg work that you have to do or what I like to call sweat equity is all part of the keeping the cost down of this budget disc brake kit. Just make sure you use some brake cleaner after you've installed the rotor to make sure that all of the grease and grime and fingerprints and dirt is off of the rotor face before you install the caliper and the pads. Now, this would be a great time for you to go ahead and throw a coat of paint on your hubs. In fact, when you get them back from the machine shop or James Duff, you'll want to actually clean them, inspect them, and put paint on then before you actually install them to the rotors. That way everything's nice and clean and brand new. You're also going to want to throw a coat of paint or some clear coat on your calipers because those could also rust if they're just left to the elements. Now, we're not going to be keeping this on because we're actually in two weeks going to be testing another brake system on this truck, the Monster Disc Brake Kit from James Duff. This is a good time to mention that if you decided that you want to go and do any hard wheeling or if you'd like to you know, run a larger tire, like say over a 35, uh, you may want to consider that disc brake kit because it runs much heavier and stronger components that can handle that type of abuse. So you see here how this caliper is floating across the pen. It's really important that it can do this as the pad wears down and also when you're bleeding the brakes and you seat the caliper to the rotor. So just make sure you've got enough clearance back here to allow this caliper to, to freely move past the knuckle. So at this point, we are going to remove the old master cylinder and put on the new one. Now we have a video on what master cylinder you need. If you're just curious about master cylinders, definitely check that out. 
but we're gonna take this one off. But if you notice, this has a brake booster. Now, if you're doing a disc brake swap, you definitely need a brake booster to really utilize all of that disc brake stopping power. So uh, definitely, if you don't have a brake booster, now is a great time to add it. It's a great upgrade. And we also have a, a brake booster video uh, if you wanna learn more about this and how it works. So as you can see, I've got the new lines from James Duff and these got a 90 fitting on this side so you can route them down behind where you need to in order to get them to the proportioning valve. You can also see the original lines here that used to feed to the other side of the master. Now you can run hard lines. You can buy new lines and route them any way you want if you'd like, but this is a nice easy solution from James Duff. All right, so it's a little hard to see down here between the motor and the inner fender, but down on the frame, there's a proportioning valve that we're gonna go ahead and mount and add and attach these lines to. Uh, go ahead and check out our proportioning valve tech video to see how that all goes down. It's really important because not only are we going to show you how to mount the proportioning valve, we're going to show you how to properly bleed it and we're going to show you how to properly wire it back in. Well, that's a wrap for this awesome budget-friendly disc brake swap kit from James Duff. And keep in mind that you're trading dollars for a little sweat equity. That's why it's a budget. And, uh, you know, grinding the knuckles and machining down the hubs, hey, that's just all part of saving a little coin. A little blood, sweat, and tears yes. <laughs> into your install. But just keep in mind, we are doing multiple disc brake, different brake system installs. So be on the lookout for those. Make sure to subscribe and check out those when they come out. That's for sure. I mean, definitely the monster disc brake kit. That one there, if you're into wheeling or running some big heavy tires, that's the kit you're really gonna wanna check out coming soon. Definitely. And make sure to check the description below. There's some really helpful links in there and there is a link to where you can buy this budget-friendly disc brake swap. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely. See you next time. Yep.